30 is decent tech here. Uh, thank you for tuning into one of my videos. Uh, I make a few of them on diesel stuff that I do, um, parts that I have to change, diagnostics, stuff like that. Uh, I enjoy what I do and I've gained some knowledge on a lot of this stuff over the years. I've got coming certifications. I really like what I do. It's fun, it's enjoyable, and it keeps these trucks on the road. Um, if you like what I do, please feel free to like, subscribe, give a comment down below. Um, anything to help these videos get out. Uh, whenever I first started, there wasn't a, a lot of knowledge for me to gain except for from some of the older people. I've been through quite a few Cummins classes. I've done all the online training. I know a lot of the stuff in the after treatment system. Uh, a lot of things that most people don't like these days. Sorry about that. Um, but if there's anything you'd like to see different, um, more footage, I try to make my videos as detailed as possible, but they don't seem to get a lot of views whenever they're really detailed, going in 30, 40 minutes in a repair. But if there's something you'd like to see, if there's something you'd like me to do different, just leave a comment down below and let me know what it is. Um, also, again subscribe to my channel it it helps uh, get these videos out to other people other technicians that are starting out uh, some of the people that are fresh out of school some of the younger kids uh, helps get them the knowledge that they need to succeed in life um, again thank you all I really appreciate all y'all anybody who watches my videos um, thank you All right, folks, we have a Cummins ECM here that I'm gonna update. I figured I'd go over the process with you guys, show you how it's done. Um, so you're gonna log into Insight, which is what I have pulled up right here. You're gonna come over here to Calibration Selection. Click on that, ECM slash PDD. And this is gonna load. Once it does, you're gonna go to your calibration workspace. Click on April. And the engine that we're working on is in a Freightliner. And that's gonna be an automotive, not industrial. Typically industrial is gonna be um, like off-road equipment and uh, like yard mules. So uh, we're working on a truck so this is going to be automotive and then we're going to go down here to where it says our engines, engine type up here right here we have X15 our ECM is a CM2350 and we're working on the X114B series which is the efficiency series X116B uh, is going to be the uh, performance series so click on that one Shit. And we're going to open up 4384413. Now, where you find this number at is going to be under your features and parameters. Oh, hell, I got time. I'll show you. So, once this loads, you're going to open up all the, all the files if you want to. I usually just open up the ECM data and go from there. The only thing I don't like doing about this is how long it takes to, to get it to open up. Cummins usually takes a while. I mean, it's reading all the information. This is basically everything that's on the engine programming, um, protection, sensors, um, after treatment, anything and everything that has to do with the engine itself is going to be located in this features and parameters tab but go to system ID data plate oh to uh, expand all of them you click view and expand all I'm not going to do that because it takes a minute for it to open all of them up and I want to get this thing programmed so I can get on to the next one and then go over here to ECM information and you're gonna have your part number. So your ECM part number is going to be right there. 
it also has your ECM serial number so if you ever need that for ordering a new ECM from Cummins for some ungodly reason uh, usually you can't access this whenever your ECM is toast but that's that so 4413 is our part number go here and then this is going to be the available updates for different ECM codes. Now if you look up here at the top you have your ECM code. ECM code 10317 is ours or the unit that we're working on right now. These are other ECMs that I've messed with also or ECM codes that I've messed with HD10151 uh, etc. So we're going to go down here to 10317 and the newest version is 0.14. Right now we're at 0.13. We're gonna double click that. Now whatever you do whenever you're updating an ECM, make sure you got good batteries, make sure your laptop is plugged in, and always do it with the USB cable. Uh, there has been times that people will be updating and they will lose communication somewhere because their laptop dies or because the truck loses power battery power if that happens then you have to flash the ECM if it's recoverable sometimes they are not recoverable and you have to replace the ECM and that shit is expensive so uh, basically once you double click it you're just going to follow the prompts like I just did and this is going to go through the you know reading the, the parameters and then it um, reads the calibration stuff like that and then it's on a program everything into it after it deletes everything off kind of like downloading a new program to your laptop or to your computer in order for the new program to take you have to get rid of the old program and that's basically exactly what it does but this usually takes five to ten minutes uh, depending on the the version that you're going to and from uh, I haven't really ever had one take more than more than 10 minutes but a lot of people say that you always need to update your ECM you always need to update your ECM I think that is bullshit because sometimes your ECM updates are not necessarily good for your engine and what I mean by that is you could have um, basically nothing going on with your engine whatsoever you update it and now you're having different codes pop up uh, I, I just I just don't do it unless it's requested or uh, by a quick serve or if a fault code that is flagging has an update available on the revisions which to see the revisions you go to quick serve online and on quick serve you'll click down here on the left this is going to be uh, basically bring up this screen here you'll type in your ECM code without the decimal point and without the decimal point you're going to get this listing here so HD 10317000102 etc all the way down here to 14 now this particular update we're going from 13 to 14 uh, has uh, reduced occurrences of P2637 being set on an Allison transmission. It also enables knock sensor service test and enables air handling performance test. Now the code that we're actually flagging is for the inlet knock sensor. I'm going to go ahead and update this and perform this service test to see if this knock sensor is failing. Um, the codes that were flagged we have 3649 which is basically you could be losing power somewhere this one here 3446 this one basically says that your knock sensor has failed there is nothing you can do there is no reprogramming or anything like that but I'm gonna do it anyways just for shits and giggles so we'll come back over here. Right now it's transferring ECM calibration. 
Hopefully it'll be done here in just a minute because I've got other trucks to work on. I brought the camera back up uh, to bring y'all back into it. It just finished transferring the ECM calibration. I also wanted to remind you that whenever you do update an ECM, there is a good chance that you are gonna lose any fault codes that are stored in the ECM. So prior to updating, make sure you record your fault codes, your counts, and the times that they were flagged. Otherwise, you could lose them and you could end up chasing your tail trying to find a problem that either doesn't exist or is caused by another uh, sensor or uh, issue that's going on somewhere else in the engine or the after treatment system. Also, typically whenever it's given pauses like this right now it's just sitting at zero seconds remaining for uh, the calibration um, so the reason it will stop and stay like this is there is a 60 second key on time and during that 60 seconds it's uh, it's it's energizing all the the modules the inlet knocks the outlet knocks the PM sensor um, the def system the def sensor um, all that stuff is being fired up and then once everything's fired up it runs its checks and then it starts as you can see restoring all the parameters and everything like that now if you're outside of the service truck whenever you're doing this or you're next to the unit itself you will hear the VGT actuator actuating back and forth you will hear the the EGR opening and closing the, the that the the valves whether it's a butterfly valve or a slide valve and you will also hear the fuel lift pump that's how you know that everything is working correctly and 99.9% .9 chance that the calibration is taken now here it's going to tell you to turn the key off hit ok going to run through its prompt to shut everything down. Once that's complete, it will have you turn the Oh, sorry about that. It will have you turn the key switch back on and it's going to run through its roughly 1 minute. I call it a charge up period. This is where it turns on all the modules and wakens everything up. It's where everything starts communicating and basically make sure that the engine is doing everything that it's supposed to be doing with key on so you got 45 seconds now this two minute period really sucks i wish it was faster but i think of it as one big ass computer that you know it's got to shut down all its different modules in order to shut down correctly you know it does them all in sequence it doesn't just shut everything down at once so you got to kind of freaking deal with it but a lot of people will actually do this without turning the key switch off and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but there is a chance that you could damage your ecm doing it that way ready to turn the key switch back on switch is on hit the button no oh. and this is going to be basically your log your results uh, so saving data plate parameters successful adjustable parameters successful calibration successful uh, restoration of data plate restoration of parameters and then it also performs an audit trail 
so that if something ever happens to the unit and DOT needs to take a look at it, they will know who did what to it. So if you're one of those guys that just goes out and starts updating vehicle speeds on units and has never had any repercussions from it, if one of those units get into a wreck and DOT does get a hold of that ECM, they can log into it and it will show your laptop logging in to that truck. And how it does that is your, your tool instance number. Every single Cummins software that's loaded on every single laptop out there has its own tool instance number, AKA fingerprint. So if you do that, there is a chance that DOT could come back to you if the unit gets into a wreck, speeding, uh, any, anything, it can come back on you. So before you update an ECM, before you recalibrate parameters, before you do anything like that, make sure that you have permission from the owner of the truck and make sure that the tires are rated for the speed that you're setting. If the tires are rated for 55 and you're setting the speed to 55 or 75, you could get in trouble for that. So now this is gonna log back into the ECM. And we can perform the knock sensor test. That will be another video. This one's gone on long enough. ECM is updated. Thank you guys, appreciate you for watching.